Back in December, California scientists made a major breakthrough, a nuclear fusion reaction that produced more energy than was used to create it. Well, scientists have done it again, and this time their results produced even more energy. Joining us now to discuss the implications of this achievement is University of California Berkeley professor, Dr. Peter Hosman. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us. Uh, talk, if you could, about um, how significant you think this is. Uh, thanks for being on the show with you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to, to talk about this. Um, well, uh, it's, we did it again, I guess, uh, right? Uh, so the scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Lab were really able to repeat and exceed, uh, it seems, the power uh, of, the, of the shots back in December. Now, what that means is that uh, one can really plan for that, right? And one has the, all the parameters and the control uh, to repeat it over and over again as needed. Uh, and uh, one can even get a higher energy out of it than originally in, in the first shots. So fission is, is, is splitting things apart, which can be very powerful, but very damaging. Fusion is bringing them together, which is much safer and potentially um, in all ways, just better for everyone if it can be done right. A lot of people know what fission versus fusion is. Can you talk about the other word we've, words we've heard recently are fusion ignition. What, what is fusion ignition? So in, so in fusion, what you do is you take two, uh, two elements, uh, in this instance, deuterium and tritium, uh, both uh, 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 versions of hydrogen, uh, uh, and uh, they brought very closely together. In fact, they're probably so closely together that the repulsive forces uh, overcome. And so imagine like two magnets with the same pole putting together and you're pushing them really hard together. So they come together. Eventually they will come together and become one new uh, element in this instance, uh, uh, helium. Now uh, in that wake of it, uh, you change the weight of it. So if you weigh the, the, the deuterium and the tritium and you weigh the helium, they have different masses. And that difference uh, is released in the form of energy. Um, and so, so that energy is then uh, released in form of radiation and maybe able to harvest it uh, so we can make use of it uh, going forward. Doctor, how, how far away do you think we are from, from fusion being a viable energy source in, in everyday life? Well, uh, uh, I think I'm uh, quoting here my colleagues from uh, Livermore, which said that this is similar sort of to the Wright brothers' uh, first flight, right? So this is a proof of concept that one can generate uh, more en energy than is consumed in this. Uh, in fact, uh, one can uh, heat its surroundings so much that it's a self-sustaining reaction uh, in, within that uh, uh, degree of, of what happens. And so, so uh, that would be the ignition process. Now we are at that point where we can say we produce more energy than it's consumed. Uh, to really make it as a, as a power plant is a long way to go. There's multiple things that need to be solved. For example, um, how do we get the energy out of this particular event? How is that actually harvested? Um, how do we make the fuel so we, we have enough fuel to operate that um, machine and, and inject it at a high enough frequency that it's a continuous process and not one shot a day, but, but uh, 10 shots a second, for example. Um, and then we have to produce the, the targets, uh, the fuel in a reasonable rate. And last but not least, uh, maybe one of the very big difficulties is to have the materials that can withstand this very, very harsh environment uh, that a fusion power plant poses uh, on everything around it, uh, surrounding it. Other than the enormous cost right now, which makes it not viable currently, are there any other downsides to fusion? Well, fusion, of course, uh, does produce some amount of uh, nuclear material, radioactive material. Uh, it's not without uh, uh, radioactive material entirely, but of course, it's much uh, less so than uh, fission would produce uh, and, and a less uh, high level material. Um, now, as you mentioned, the costs uh, and the time frame by which it may happen uh, is, of course, something we don't know at this point in time. Doctor, uh, I, but, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, but uh, uh, it's very promising that we uh, have uh, this uh, initial uh, success here and really can show that more, more energy is produced than we consume and that we did it again. 
A lot of people have been talking about nuclear reactions and all of this recently because Oppenheimer has gotten a lot of attention at the box office. I, I didn't want to ask you if you've seen the movie and, and what you thought of it, if you did. I've not seen the movie yet. It's on my to-do list for next weekend. Um, but uh, I've I, I heard good things, and it was filmed right here in Berkeley, at least parts of it. And it was filmed part in, in Los Alamos, New Mexico as well, where you spend a, quite a bit of time. So it's a fantastic uh, visit, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Okay, I didn't know some was, was uh, filmed at Berkeley, but um, that's interesting to hear. All right, I'm um, talking about fusion with uh, Professor Peter Hostman from the University of California at Berkeley. We do appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much for having me.